Okay, everyone ready? Okay. So welcome in person after two years, which is pretty incredible. All right, officially, welcome Phaedrus graduates, current Phaedrites, newly admitted Phaedrites to be, parents and guardians, families, faculty, staff, administrators, and Board of Education members to our annual Phaedrus Senior Summit. Oh my gosh, I can't see. To our annual Phaedrus Senior Ceremony. Let me start first with our thank yous. Thanks again to all of our colleagues who play such a vital role in our program. The three psychologists, Michelle Greenwald, Mitch Shapiro, and Robin Younger for facilitating the social emotional component of our community and creating character and group building activities both virtually and in person throughout this whole year. I'm so appreciative. Our admins, Kyle Hoosier, Jennifer Johnson, and Mary Rose Joseph for teaching Phaedra's courses in their spare time and for their endless support. Too many teachers to name who share their life experiences as our Wednesday speakers. And of course, to Pam, my co-pilot in, in every way. I also want to share my gratitude to Peter Scatero, who is here today, for the amazing job he did this fall. He had tremendous shoes to fill, um, and he took on each challenge easily and willingly. I'm really so appreciative, Peter. Thank you to the Phaedrus fan. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So Peter is Thank you to the Phaedrus families for your never-ending support of our program service and group building um, exercises, essays and projects, and more. Thanks to the junior class who have helped to make sure we get this afternoon just right. And finally, thank you to the seniors, without whom we wouldn't even be here. Each of you has brought your own unique and special gifts to our program. Alex, Sam, Ricky, Sophie, Anya, Daisy, Charlotte, Kayla, Alexa, Kirk, Fernando, Jordan, Aaliyah, Dexter, Lucas, and Gavin. We are very proud of you. You have challenged assumptions, worked hard, gained confidence, raised questions, advocated for what you believed in, engaged in community service and fundraising work, and of course, read, wrote, and presented a lot. You also became leaders and role models to our juniors during, during an extraordinary time in our history and showed them how to be true Phaedrites every step of the way. We hope that you feel proud about what you have accomplished here because we certainly do. And that's why we're here today, to celebrate your time in our Phaedrus program, give you a chance to share what you've learned in a public way in front of your families and friends, and to wish you all the best. If this past year has taught us anything, we hope you realize that we are here to, for you beyond the walls of the Phaedrus space, and we can't wait to hear sorry, all about your achievements next year and beyond. Before I pass the mic to all of our incredible speakers today, I wanted to share a recent experience with you. It isn't exactly about school, but you know I love a good metaphor, so just indulge me for a moment. It's a story about wood, yes, wood, and I even have some visual aids to help me share with you today. John, who's going home? Okay, slide one when you're ready. All right, recently we got a big delivery of wood at our house for our fire pit, and we came home to see a huge pile dumped onto the driveway. As you can see, no one had stacked it or put it neatly onto our property, so it was clear that it was our responsibility to bear. It was daunting to imagine taking on this task, to say the least. So piece by piece, my husband and I brought the wood over to an area of our property that we thought would look nice, and we started stacking. It felt like a huge Tetris puzzle, and we very carefully added each row of wood so that the front of the pile was flat and flush to anyone walking by. <laughs> I was extremely proud of our work, as you can see. This one's embarrassing. You can do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> However, when we looked at the pile from the side, we could see some flaws in our stack. The wood was clearly slanted and leaning forward. What had looked neat and flat from the front had some serious issues hidden behind. But the pile was standing, so we crossed our fingers and went on with our day. Later though, as you could probably imagine, the stack had fallen and was all over the ground, a total mess. We were frustrated and, frustrated and tired, but we also knew that in order to get this wood to stay in place, we needed a new plan. So we took down the stack completely and built it back up again. This time though, we made sure the back of the stack was straight, not the front. 
We needed a sturdier foundation so that the wood could rest on each other and not allow the pieces above and below them to fall. When we finished, the pile might not have looked so perfect from the front, but that wood was now stronger as a unit, each piece completely supported by ones around it. All right. To me, this year has kind of felt like that wood pile. The pandemic made things messy and challenging and not exactly like they usually are in Phaedrus. But we all figured out how to make our program work with many of the same attributes as always, and of course, without some of the others. We worked together to build a strong foundation and a system that required the support of all of our members. We chose and created our courses, elected jobs, presented final projects, engaged in advisory meetings, participated in group building workshops with Sharp Reservation, discussed politics, and reflected on the events at the Capitol. We heard from speakers from all walks of life and started an incredible program with our Phaedrus alums who shared how the A School has impacted each of their lives. We donated to a family in need over the holidays and participated in community service projects throughout the year. The list goes on and on, but I think you get the point. My takeaway from my random wood story and advice to you, even if you build something and something else totally out of your control knocks it down. As long as you have a strong support system and a desire to figure things out, you can rebuild it. And maybe it's not the same as it was, but maybe it's stronger and better than ever before. And maybe wear gloves if you ever stack wood because you can get a lot of splinters. That's my wood story. <laughs> okay. And now we'd like to <laughs> They all think I'm weird in my life. Um, and now we'd like to welcome our alumni speaker, Dan Sedicario, class of 97, who will share his own experience and advice to you. Thank you, Dan, for being here this afternoon. All right. How are we doing? Cue the win. <laughs> All right, so Pam, where's Pam? Oh, there she is. Corey, graduates, right? Graduates? All over. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll get it right at some point. Um, distinguished guests, got that right. I'm honored to be here with you today. Um, I graduated Phaedrus in 1997. Uh, which is 132 years ago. <laughs> That's wrong. Sorry. 24 years ago. Uh, my own kids are now 13 and 14 years old. I own a house. I don't just have a job, but I've been around long enough to have a career. And I've been a pro professional cook, a filmmaker. In recent years, I've become a Latin dance instructor. But most of all, I have spent the last 15 years teaching high school English. Uh, after graduating from Edgemont High School, I majored in English and film at Colorado College, and I went on to, to get a graduate degree in teaching high school English from New York University. I eventually uh, moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where I've been teaching high school English for 15 years, the last 12 of which I've been teaching specifically at a college preparatory school called MICDS. Which is to say I've spent the majority of my professional life working in the same realm of life as that of Phaedrus. So you could say I have some thoughts on it. So what advice can I give you? I could say something like how this chaotic world needs your, you young graduates to be the leaders of this remarkable change that is needed to fight global warming, social inequalities, and as Bo Burnham says, all that stuff. But all these problems have one thing at the center, a series of rules meant to keep everything the same way it has always been. Rules instantly sound bad when you state it as a concept, but we love rules. Rules help us uh, feel comfortable and safe. So we put up lots of rules, rules here, rules there. Life will, uh, life will endlessly try to get you to follow the rules and buy into the rules and accept them as good and important. So rather than advice, I want to offer an analogy, one that is very much from an English teacher. Life is genre literature, and high school is a genre. So what is a genre? 
this is my class. I'd actually be waiting for an answer, but I'll tell you. Uh, you know, you think of like horror, YA novels, uh, science fiction. Um, uh, a scholar, John Kinsella, says that uh, he defines genre as um, a set of rules that dictate the probable flow of narrative. The reader expects certain patterns uh, to be created and engaged with. The reader picks up a, a romance expecting the heart to be manipulated for a sense of longing and resolution between characters. So too, school is a set of rules that dictate a probable flow, patterns that create expectations. So what happens when you go to a school like the A school? A school that defies the rules, breaks the genre it's a part of. There's a moment in 1997 that I re refer back to whenever I'm planning a new lesson for my own students. I was taking the 1960s, or history class, is that still a thing? No, I'm not. Uh, so I walked into the A school, which back then was an actual trailer back over there. Uh, maybe some alum know about this. I think it was actually two trailers, like they tried to like glue together. It was, it was really sketchy, but uh, it worked for us. Um, I remember that we were sitting on a circle in the floor, so they were, we were having sort of like a picnic uh, of, of intelligence. And I remember that we were in, sitting in a circle and um, typically Pam led the discussion and introduced ideas and we would answer questions about the homework, but it was senior year and our group was uh, becoming more and more independent and self-aware. We were discussing the homework, uh, the homework reading on civil rights and I remember Pam asked the first question and some of us responded slowly, hesitantly. And I remember I just had to jump in and ask one of my own questions, so I did. And then someone else asked a follow-up question and I looked over at Pam and she made this gesture where she pointed to her own notes and um, gave a, a sort of delighted shrug. And like we had just start, started down a path similar to what she had prepared for us. And then she did something I will never forget. She closed her book and just got comfortable. And then the rest of the class, we students went on uh, through the readings and figuring out what we, what we were learning and then develop some of our own questions for further inquiry and research later on. So when I became a teacher, I excitedly wanted to create or recreate this experience in my own classroom, but it went spectacularly wrong uh, my first few years. I was so stubbornly fixated on the idea of breaking what Kinsella calls the, the gratification of certainty. So after my class read the first chapter of A Tale of Two Cities for homework, I told them, I'm not gonna lead the discussion. You need to ask your own questions and work together and come up with answers. So begin. And I'll never forget seeing one of my students looking horrified, like I had just dropped her into the middle of a desert with no provisions. Looking back, she was right to feel that way. In fact, I have the fantasy that I, I meet these former students someday and get to apologize. It took me to acknowledge, or it took me years to acknowledge that I had to be more sensitive to the way my students were conditioned to live by rules and expectations. The philosopher Derrida says, I have left myself be command, or I've let myself be commanded by the law of our encounter, by the convention of our subject, notably the genre, the law of genre. This law assigned us places and limits. We love genre. And here I was simply ripping my students away from it. Over the last decade, I have learned to create assignments and projects that give limits and laws or rules, but are still meant to give students more and more independence. When I assign an essay to write about a novel, they are clear, there are clear expectations about the techniques needed to be practiced and rubrics explaining how they will be assessed. Um, and, but, but at the end of all this, students will still ask me, okay, so what's my grade? Or what's gonna be my grade? Or so what, what theme do you think I should write about for my essay and what theme will lead to the best grade? Or how many quotes should I have in my essay? Or what's the word limit? And if I, if I go over it with you, will I be uh, deducted any points? So rule breaking is frightening. If they all want, if all they want is to experience the, 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 the genre of life and meet exactly what they expected, what can help them navigate this transition? So to answer that question, just this week, 
I, um, my, my parents are actually moving from Edgemont literally this year. And just this week, I combed through um, some old pieces of paper that I had left over from the A school. Notes from all my classes, even notes from that moment in Pam's 60s class. My son asked me, is this high school? And I replied, it can be. As we started to get to the bottom of the pile of papers, we hit a point where the class notes stopped. And uh, what was left was just a few pages of what looked to be a diary-like journals. One page was a typed reflection I wrote about, uh, that, that I wrote about experiences I had with being bullied and witnessing racism. But on top of that page was a sticky note attached that simply read, talk to Pam about this. I don't know what happened with this, whether I spoke to Pam uh, uh, about this or not, or what the outcome was, but I think this is the other piece of the puzzle, that as you help others embrace their deviant side, their ability to experience their own volition and freedom, they may need moments of comfort and support, which we call love. I don't have the answer to what all of this means. I just know that this career as an English teacher has been my chance to evangelize and try to create new spaces for others to experience a break from the rules and help them see what Phaedra showed me. That these kids, that you kids, you graduates, already have everything you need to learn and that you are loved. COVID showed me a lot about education, but one thing in particular is that when students are passionate and self-driven, brick walls and chairs and a single teacher with a class and learning and uh, class time and homework and grades and lectures, none of it is necessary for learning and excellence to occur. Graduates, you're right here. You lucky intellectual deviants, you have everything you need to be successful and you are loved. Thank you. I believe next up are the juniors. Phaedrites, parents, administrators, and faculty. Welcome to the 2021 Phaedra Senior Ceremony. Every single senior this year has made Phaedrus a place where we all want to be, and it has truly felt like a community and a home. While most of us were strangers coming into this year, we have become the closest of friends, some might even say family. This year has certainly not been normal. However, we have definitely made the best of it. At the beginning of the year, all of us weren't sure how we could possibly make this work or have somewhat of a normal ACE school experience. However, the seniors welcomed us with open arms and smiling faces. They assured us that we would still have an amazing year, even with COVID restrictions. As a matter of fact, we truly made the best of everything that came our way. We've, we faced many challenges together, such as the pandemic, different cohorts, social distancing, virtual learning, sneeze guards, and not always being together. We are so happy to have had you guys as our senior mentors for our A-School experience, and we want to take this time to recognize each and every one of you. Charlotte, we will miss your smile, which can light up a whole room, and your constant humor. Your ability to make everyone laugh and feel comfortable to just walk up to or talk to is appreciated by us all. Thank you for everything you've done for me and everyone else in A-School. I can't wait to see you do amazing things in the future. Have the best time at UConn. Gavin, we will miss your beautiful beard, your bashful <laughs> outfits, your constant talk of sports, and your love of country music. You constantly put a smile on everyone's face, and your jokes have everyone laughing. Have an incredible time at Mizzou. You're going to do great, and we can't wait to see what your future holds. Aaliyah, we will miss your kindness and approachability. Your fun-loving personality and brilliant smile never failed to impress. I still remember how we figured out that we had so much in common, from favorite ice cream flavors to TV shows. Even when you were remote, we all got so excited to see you online and loved being in breakout rooms with you. Good luck at you, Buffalo. 
Anya, who missed your kindness and willingness to help others. You've always been so welcoming when I first joined A school. Who miss your positive energy and always relatable vibes. We'll also miss your bright and colorful personality. You have the best sense of style and a color that is unique to yourself. Hope you have a great time at SMU. Daisy, we'll miss your kind and exuberant smile personality. You are so sweet and welcoming whenever anyone approaches you. We have loved seeing you grow as an incoming senior and watching you thrive as a learning to become an EMT. Thank you so much and have a great time at Wagner. Good luck. Sam, we will miss your chill and cool personality. You always have been a great mentor to me and I felt that you were always easy to relate to. You're fun to be with, but also add meaningful additions to our group conversations. I'll miss you next year and hope you come visit. I know you'll drive at college. Kirk, we'll miss your welcoming attitude and acceptance to the juniors as they came into A school. You made me feel welcome from the moment I came in and it meant so much. I know you're gonna do amazing things and spread that sense of community wherever you go. Have an amazing time at Lafayette, congrats. Kayla. We'll miss your positive energy and ability to make everyone laugh. I have been so lucky to have you as my mentor, and you've never failed to be caring and supportive throughout this whole year. I can't wait to see the great things you've achieved at Arizona. And then Amanda's not here, so Alexa, I'll be speaking for her. Alexa, we will, be miss we will miss your willingness to help and, of course, your sarcastic humor. You know how to make everyone laugh with just a small comment. You've been such an amazing mentor, and I've always made sure to check in on me. Thank you for answering all my questions, big and small. You're going to do great things at Sierra. Dexter, we all miss what an amazing and great guy you are. You've worked so hard to help make Phaedrus the place it is. Your constant additions to conversations and group discussions are always so thoughtful and useful. Your willingness to take the lead and guide your group through an activity has been so important to us. Your infinite dexterity will be missed. <laughs> Have an amazing time at St. Lawrence. Jordan, we will miss your insightful thoughts and kind demeanor. You're an amazing friend and mentor to me. Our conversations always seem to end in laughter no matter what, whether it's about schools, college, <laughs> shoes, life. Um, I wish you the best luck in the next chapter of your life at the University of Buffalo. Ricky, we'll miss your, your enthusiasm, dependability, and bright smile. We are so lucky to have an academic like you. <laughs> Whenever we needed something, Jenna and I always knew that you were one text away. You are so inclusive, and we felt so comfortable coming to you as a role model and friend. Good, Good luck, luck at Lafayette next year. <laughs> Sophie, we will miss your constant laughter, creative ideas, and fashionable fits. Your contributions in class were always so insightful. Your art projects are truly amazing and added so much to the A school. There's truly no one who make, no one like who makes coffee as well as you. I love you and I can't wait to see what you accomplish at Michigan. Lucas, um, we will miss your energy in A school. Your laugh we can hear from a mile away. I'm so glad to have had you as my mentor. You are the best. Um, thank you for always making everyone laugh during community meeting and lightening the mood whenever possible. Uh, you are such a welcoming, extroverted, accepting person, and Phaedrus has been so incredibly lucky to have you. You are going to do amazing things at NYU Tisch. Alex, we will miss your calm and friendly character and your humor. You work hard and are always helping, willing to help everyone out. Your presence is always appreciated by everyone here in the A school, and this year would not be the same without you. I hope you have an incredible time at Indiana. Fernando, we will miss your carefully worded and extremely intelligent contributions to class. Thanks for all of your dedication to the program and your wonderful friendships that always made us smile. Lastly, thank you for all that you have done for me, making me feel welcome in the program from the start. We're so sad to, leave, to lose you to Manhattan College, but we know you're going to do amazing there. Seniors, we will all miss we will all miss you as you go forward into college. You guys really made the best of this year and help us juniors through it all. You were amazing mentors and most of all friends. The pandemic couldn't get in the way of Phaedrus and we powered through it. I remember sitting on the tennis courts in early fall, hybrid classes throughout the winter, 
most of all masks, it, it all seemed like a lifetime ago. I'm so grateful we were able to all come together towards the end of our year and see each other again. You treated us like family, something that my classmates and I hope to carry on to our senior year. We will always look up to you guys because you guys taught us how to be true Phaedrians. On behalf of everyone in A school, I'd also like to thank Corey and Pam and Peter. Peter. Hi, Peter. <laughs> um, for doing their absolute best this year to give us an authentic experience in the midst of the pandemic. Everyone here recognizes the tremendous effort you all put in, and we thank you. Now I invite Ricky Blostein to give his senior speech. Hi, am I loud enough? Okay. Question four. What are you looking for in Phaedrus that you have not found in high school so far? Without a second thought, I quickly typed the two words that have been circling in my mind for weeks, the community. I know what you're thinking. It's a cliche response. One that I'm sure has shown up on every other Phaedrus application when they are unsure what to say. But for me, I felt part of the community even when I was not officially in it. Two years ago, my brother was part of Phaedrus. Each day he would come home and share about how amazing the program was, ranging from social emotional learning to creative liberties in the classes he was taking. However, he spent most of the time talking about how close he had become with everyone around him. My brother would tell me about the bonds he had formed with his classmates and how some of them have become his closest friends. It seemed crazy to me that within four months, you can go from barely making eye contact with someone in the halls to being right by their side through anything. But I kept my thoughts to myself. During the winter of my brother's senior year, I finally began to see just what he was talking about. In January of 2019, my father passed away. We were very close and to say I was devastated would be an understatement. While most people didn't know what to do or say, the Phaedrus community was always there. Although I was not fully part of the community, it made no difference to them. Throughout the week, new members of the community would show up at my house, each finding different ways to help. I would receive texts from students I had never met, wondering if I had anything. At first, I was confused as to how each and every person was so open and caring. But as I spent more time in the program, I started to understand the two reasons why, Pam and Corey. While they may not admit it, Pam and Corey are the reasons as to why the community is as special as it is. Not only do they teach us important academic skills, but they have also taught us lessons that we will carry on through life. Specifically, through their actions, Pam and Corey have taught me that while an act may seem small to you, it may mean the world to others. So do whatever you can to help. One of the ways Pam has shown me this is through working on the Colors Against Cancer Race, an event that honors Taylor Matthews, an ace schooler that passed away in 2003 from cancer. Each year, Pam hosts this event with the help of some students to make sure Taylor's memory lives on. I bring up this event because it goes to show that Pam does not have to host this because she agreed to it, but because her small act can make a huge difference in the life of another family. The way Corey showed me this lesson was last year on an ace school trip. Each year, ace school goes on a camping trip, one that lasts two days and one night. Coincidentally, last year, the trip landed on my birthday, which recently has become a tough day for me. While during the day I was faring pretty well, I was having a rough time during the night. Wanting to make sure I was okay, Corey sat and talked with me outside the cabin from about 1 a.m. in the, from about 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. That moment was really important to me because it showed how lucky I was to have people in my life who want to make sure I was doing okay, no matter the time of day. To Corey, it might've just been three hours of her day, but to me, it meant the world. There really is no way this program will be where it is today without them. Pam and Corey are what make the community. Two years ago, I wrote that sentence about wanting to be an A-school for the community, and it has not changed since. This community is unlike anything I have ever been a part of. Like my brother, some of the people that I used to brush by in the halls two years ago have become some of my closest friends. I really want to thank everyone in A-school for not only making this program feel so special, but for making it like a home. And while to quote it from The Wizard of Oz, there really is no place like home. Thank you. Next up is Sophie. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Phaedrus graduation, COVID edition. Back in my sophomore year, when I was applying to Phaedrus, one of the questions I chose to answer was, what would I say to my future self who had just graduated from Edgewell High School? I saved that document, hoping I'd be able to come back and look at it as a graduating member of Phaedrus, even happier when I, than I was when I wrote it. So here's my letter to myself. Dear sophomore Sophie, 
First of all, definitely don't drink coffee while you're wearing your white graduation dress. That was a mistake. More importantly, here's what I want to say while you are finishing your application to Patris. Stop freaking out about the application. It's just being used as a way to get to know you, not to stress you out. I know that you think that Phaedrus is going to be the best experience of your academic career, but you have no idea what's ahead of you. With Phaedrus, the thought of going to school on a Monday um, is no longer going to be dreadful. You will find yourself intrigued by the curriculum and taking classes you never thought existed. I know history class has never appealed to you, but you won't feel that way for too much longer. Your horizons will broaden and you'll be passionate about finding something to love in the things you once sit in. Phaedrus will be like a pair of prescription glasses. What I mean by this is that Phaedrus will clarify and bring into focus your outlook on your academic experience. It will be the lens through which you could see what you need to do for yourself in order to extract the best of what high school has to offer. Phaedrus is so special because the style in which the curriculum is taught is based primarily off of how each member of the program learns best. However, no student knows exactly what they need to succeed to the fullest. Not even you. Phaedrus will guide you to, to discover the small things that will surprisingly make the biggest impacts on your appreciation for your education. Specifically, you will uncover how to create personal connections to your work, which will enrich your understanding of the curriculum in every class. The struggle you feel to make personal connections to your schoolwork actually is one of the reasons you find yourself anxious. This is something you could say goodbye to though. I'm not saying you will never feel anxious and stressed again, but just emphasizing the support you will receive from your teachers and peers in the Phaedrus program. These people will truly change your life. You write about how you wish to create relationships with the people of Phaedrus so close, it's like family. Well, your wish came true. Your classmates will not only become your friends, but they will act as mentors to you. In addition to creating strong bonds with your peers, you will build friendships with the teachers in Phaedrus. The teachers in, Ph in Phaedrus will make such an effort to get to know you as a student and more importantly, as a person. The feeling of community in Phaedrus is so real. Being a part of something like this, you will never be alone. So take it all in, appreciate every moment of your time in Phaedrus because before you know it, you'll be staining your white graduation dress. Best, just graduated senior Sophie. I had no idea whether I'd be accepted into Phaedrus, or if I was, whether anything I wrote would be true. However, once I became a part of Phaedrus, I learned that everyone is accepted. I learned that school is a place to question. I learned that it's okay and even desirable to go out of your comfort zone. And I learned about how important community is. Almost all of us here today have been here with Phaedrus for two years, and what a wild two years it has been. Who would have predicted a global pandemic that shut our communities down for so long? I'm grateful to have been part of the Phaedrus community with this extraordinary group and two incredible teachers. So thank you, Phaedrus, for the enduring memories, a lifetime of skills, and most importantly, an unforgettable school experience. Um, next up is Anya. Hello, everyone. Um, when I applied to Phaedrus, I had no idea how the program would change me and the way I viewed my own education. Because of Phaedrus, I have become someone who truly loves to engage in discussions and become a part of the learning process. In the Phaedrus community, we like to say that you get what out what you put in. Meaning the harder you work in the program, the more you will grow and learn about yourself. Through this mindset, I've been able to put in the work to grow as a student and an individual. This has allowed me to reflect on who I am, how I want to improve, and who I will become. I'm so grateful for all the friendships and experiences I've had in A school that have shaped my high school experience. The friendships I have, I have made through Phaedrus are some of the most genuine relationships I have. We are a community, and I couldn't be more thankful for all of you. Juniors, I'm so excited for you guys to continue to grow to your potential in Phaedrus. You guys are such a special group of people, and I'm so thankful to experience this year in Phaedrus with you guys. Careful not to blink because it truly does go by fast. Seniors, congrats and thank you for all being there from the beginning. I was so thankful to have you guys all by my side during this crazy year. I know you will all do amazing things in college and I'm so excited for you all. Pam and Corey, you guys have taught me so much and I wouldn't be here graduating without you. I couldn't thank you guys enough for everything you do for me 
and for everyone in the Phaedrus program. You guys are truly what makes it so special. And next up is Charlotte. I have a habit of making myself laugh during changes, <laughs> but I will <laughs> really try this time not to Dexter. <laughs> G. Stanley Hall, a pioneering psychologist and educator, described adolescence and young adulthood as a period of storm and stress. And that was very much me as a 10th grader, a young lost teen that wanted more and was dissatisfied with their current high school education. I knew I needed to push myself out of my comfort zone, and A school was that tool. That has truly been an amazing experience, being surrounded by like-minded individuals who bounce ideas off of each other and share and bring the same enthusiasm and energy to class. I would never have been exposed to such a wide variety of people that I would otherwise never have been friends with. And truth be told, I'm surprised we've gone along and now know each other so well. I can only say to the incoming Phaedrites and the rising seniors to jump for every opportunity that Pam and Corey give and that the old adage, what you put in is what you get out, absolutely applies here. To A school, you truly do not know the impact and influence you have on me. Thank you for showing me that there is so much more out there that we just don't know of yet. Just as Phaedrus played a central role in helping me step out of my comfort zone, I hope I did the same for others and I'm glad to reciprocate. Enormous thank you to, is due to Pam and Corey for going above and beyond as our teachers and truly making the program what it is. Thank you for the unconditional encouragement and support and for seeing the potential that I could not see in myself. Pam, thank you for always pushing us to question everything and see matters from every angle and perspective. Corey, thank you for showing us the importance of trust and collaboration and peer review. Thank you to the psychologists, Mitch, Michelle, and Robin for being so open and facilitating advisory and weekly meetings. And to the juniors and seniors, thank you for joining me as we finish our final chapter of adolescence. I'm so glad I took the leap of faith to join A School, to be a part of a community that lives and supports each other. I'm still in that period of storm and stress that Hall speaks of, but because of A School, I'm slowly moving away from it bit by bit. May this year be a reminder of how hope and fight can push through. As Gail Sheehy once said, if we don't change, we don't grow. If we don't grow, we aren't really living. Next up is Kayla Ferraro. Hi, everybody. Wow, I don't even know where to begin. This journey has been one of a lifetime. First of all, I would like to start off by saying a huge thank you to both Pam and Corey. Pam, thank you so much for giving me guidance and advice throughout the past two years. You've helped me become more confident in myself, especially with your class dynamic. Corey, thank you so much for helping me keep organized and head on with my work and for letting me explore and express my leadership skills in class. I would also like to say a huge thank you to my fellow Phaedrites. This program would not be possible without each and every one of you, and I appreciate and thank you for shaping me and helping me grow into the person that I am today. Thank you for making this program the best that it could possibly be, given the hardships that were thrown at us this year. When I came into the Phaedrus program, I was very timid. I stayed very close to people that I knew entering the program in the same grade as me. After a few days had gone on, I started to open my shell to other people in the community, and a trust bond had been created. There's a meeting where students meet together in either small advisory groups or as one whole large group is where students can feel free to express themselves and what is currently going on in their lives. Phaedrus is a community that is inclusive and is supportive of all, and Thursday meeting is served as a purpose to support these ideas. When I had joined Phaedrus, I was not very fond of the Thursday meeting idea. I was not sure if I really wanted to open up to people that I hardly knew. Now, it's senior year, and oh, have the tables turned. I ended up becoming the senior head of Thursday meeting this year, working with Jenna Musoff, the junior head. The idea of having a support system there for you no matter when you need it 
is quite comforting, and I decided to expand on my trust and communication skills when becoming the Thursday meeting senior head. I've always not been one to trust very easily. When coming into the phages program, I decided to change my approach towards people. Who knows, maybe I would learn from it. Clearly I did. Phages did not only change my confidence when it comes to trusting people, but it also had a huge impact on my confidence with myself. I have stopped doubting myself whenever I would stumble upon a word while reading aloud or raising my hand and bringing up a question that has absolutely nothing to do with the discussion that is happening in class. I've become a better writer, reader, learner, public speaker, and have learned to advocate for my own self. I am forever grateful to be able to bring the skills that I have learned in Phaedra's program to college with me next year and beyond that. I believe that everything in life is a lesson or a blessing, and Phaedra's has proven itself to be a true blessing. Next is Alexa Philippone. Um, a few years ago, I would never be, never be able to do something like this. Getting up in front of a big group of people, talking to myself, talking about myself, and feeling comfortable while doing it seemed like something I would never be able to achieve. Being a part of Phaedrus has truly changed that. I was always the kid to sit in the back of the class with their head down, hoping that I wouldn't be called on. I was comfortable in my own small little bubble. When I was accepted into the program, I was nervous for what was to come. Knowing that I had to put myself out there was a scary thing for me. I always wondered if I said something wrong that everyone would look at me differently, or if I didn't say anything at all, I'd be different from everyone else. If it wasn't for Pam and Corey, I would not have opened up. They put me in situations that were way out of my comfort zone. Last year, I was very, very encouraged to take a class on public speaking, my worst nightmare. I was always filled with anxiety, nervous that I was going to mess up my words or just completely freeze. I would dread going to this class because I was comfortable being in the background and on the spotlight. But I knew I had the support of my peers. We all wanted to see each other succeed. It wasn't until now that I realized how important that class was to me because I'm finally in front of everyone speaking about myself with confidence. Phaedrus, Pam, and Corey have really helped me be comfortable being my own skin. To my peers, thank you for dealing with me. The friendships I've made with everyone will definitely last a lifetime. And Pam and Corey, thank you for everything. You always supported me and pushed me to my best because you know I could do better. You always knew when something was off and I'm really going to miss that from both of you next year. Next up is Fernando. Well, who would have thought if you had asked me 10 years ago where I would see myself now, I certainly wouldn't have said here. Over the past two years in A school, I feel like I've grown so much as a person, mostly thanks to Pam and Corey, but also thanks to my great classmates. Uh, Pam and Corey have always been really, they've always been there to help out. Whenever I, whenever I needed something, they would be there for me. And thanks to them, well, I used to be very shy, but now I'm also not the, I'm not the greatest speaker, but I certainly wouldn't have been out here if it wasn't for them. Like they made this possible and I'm so grateful for that. And when I first started, I was just like, I just like keeping to myself. I was inside my own little shell, but Pam and Corey helped, helped me break out of my shell. They threw me out there, this out of my comfort zone. And I feel like learning through experience is really one of the greatest things. And that's what A school does really well because it pushes you out of your comfort zone, but it doesn't just like it doesn't force you too far. Like you know your limits. They know your limits and that's where they help you because they can help you grow from these limits. And I also want to thank all the seniors because they've been here for the past two years with me and I've known them for all this time. And I feel like they're people I could really rely on. I could always be there for them because I've known them for so long. It's like we've been together since seventh grade, so I knew them better than most. And I also really want to thank the juniors 
you guys inspire me because entering this school year was it was tough with COVID and all of that. It was really not easy. And it took a lot of the failures experience, but everyone still managed to make the most out of that. You guys all impressed me time and again with your camaraderie, your teamwork. It was really nice to see all of you, despite all those difficulties, you always pushed forward. You were always there to support everyone. And I think that also really helped me because by seeing that, that inspired me to also do the same. These, these past two years, they've just gone flying. Like, I know this is really cliche, but it's really gone by so fast. And you guys, next year, you'll feel the same way. When you're up here, you'll be like, wow, it really did go by fast. Because it's just such a nice experience. And Pam and Corey, they were just, they just gave away a long, like, they gave away hours of their lives helping the program run as smoothly as possible. And that's something I think we all got to appreciate a lot because without them, none of this would have happened to begin with. This program is really like, it's mostly run by the, by the students because we all are like the class are very open. Everyone can talk, but if it wasn't for Pam and Corey, none of this would have really happened to begin with. And I'm going to miss all of you, but you know, life goes on. That's how it is next year. You guys are going to be the seniors. You're going to be there for the new juniors. And I just hope you guys do a great job at keeping the Phaedrus legacy alive. And I really want to thank all of you again. It's been a great two years with you guys. Thanks for the Jordan Menta. Making sure this is good. So, good afternoon, everyone. Joining the Phaedrus program was a blessing and was a major highlight to my junior year. This year, I came in new to the program. This is my first year. I'm a senior. Finding out I was accepted made me really happy through a time of stress and discomfort. Everybody was out of school due to COVID-19, and online school became the new normal. Many kids were not accepted into the program last year. So seeing my name on the list was a blessing and just showed me I had to live up to my name. Knowing that this was my last year in high school and only year of A school really pushed me to want to work harder and put in everything I had. Being in the Phaedrus program taught me so much this year to work hard and to give it all I have, to be willing to listen and take in all the information I can, to aspire to be better than I was yesterday and keep improving each and every day. Meeting new students and creating new friendships made it feel like family in only a short period of time. Hearing other students' passions and ideas made me really take in new suggestions and recommendations on different ways of thinking. Taking a role of leadership was a big step for me this year as well. When other students saw me take initiative, it made, me, it made them also want to speak and express their opinions as well. The teachers in A school and psychologists have guided me and led me to success this year. Having Peter as my teacher for half of the year definitely verified my interest to go into a career of law. He gave me a good blueprint and explained the difficulties of law school and how you have to be willing to take in the information and learn fast. I learned a lot from him in only a few months. It was nice having a teacher who has endured the field and studied the career I'm going into. Having Pam come back and be herself was just what A school needed. Although we could not have her in person for classes, she still had she still gave us the A school feel and made classes more lively when she returned. Having Corey in my classes was also a great experience. She shaped my writing so well in just a short period of time. She influenced and gave me ideas as to what a good final project should look like. Having that support and help from Corey definitely made me excel in my final project. My audience was very involved, and if not for COVID, more people would have liked to watch and listen to what I had to say. She also was a very patient with me on days as to where I would not be myself and have good energy in class. I'm forever thankful for that. Having the psychologist take the time and be very patient with all of us made it opportunistic for all students. 
Some days we wouldn't want to talk and they would be very patient with us. And that's what made it feel great. I thank my teachers, psychologists, and anybody who helped me along the way. Having A school, my final year of high school, really made me thankful for everything given to me. Throughout my high school experience, I didn't think I would find a program in school that represents me as well as A school. It always felt as if something was missing and the regular class book was not enough. Coming into Edgemont and learning about Phaedrus made it a desire to want to be part of the program. They say everything happens for a reason, and I think it was in the plan for me to be in A school and learn so many new things and meet many new people. The relationships built with people would definitely last, and the teachers who taught me, I'll definitely look forward to reaching. To the graduating class of 2021, take pride in how far you have come and have, far, and have faith in how far you can go. Thank you. So first, I just want to give a massive thanks to both Pam, Corey, uh, Peter, and all the juniors that helped make this happen. And without all of you, this year would not have been so much fun. And I uh, can't thank you all enough. Uh, I would also like to thank my parents, who were actually the first to really open me up to the idea of Phaedrus. And without them, I might not have actually ever even joined the program in the first place. Uh, but in 10th grade, when I started meeting people in the program and when I went to a couple of classes, I knew I would love it here. I also would like to say just how special of a program Phaedrus is and the way that we saw this throughout the year with all the alumni that jumped on the opportunity to come back and tell their story and give back to the community. I think that these, these alumni still treasure their memories from the time they were in Phaedrus 5 10, and even over 20 years ago. I hope I'll be able to come back in the future to see what the A school is like. And I think one of the most important lessons I got out of the A school is to always speak my mind. If you know me, you know I'm a very talkative person. Probably one of my favorite things is I like to talk. <laughs> so being in A school and being Phaedrus just gave me the opportunity to always speak my mind and always give my opinion. Even, and I think that's tough because you could be wrong, you could be laughed at, you could be just said that your opinion is wrong. And so I think going into the future, taking that idea into college, always speaking my mind, always giving my opinion, is something that I'll really treasure. These past two years in the Phaedrus program have been amazing, and I'm glad to have been part of a great community. Thank you. Last up, certainly not least, Lucas Sun. You're right, it's kind of least for me. Uh, dear A School, it has been a very long and eventful two years that have changed my life slowly, which is to say probably my, my pace. I'm a slow person. Uh, but wow, A school was able to move me so much, even though I was a person who was hard to move. It was simple. I, I was interested, I paid attention, and if I wasn't, I did not pay attention. But A school somehow intrigued me in everything. Damn, how did you guys do that? I tend to try to break the ice during situations, which many situations I think you prefer lava more than ice. But speak up a little oh hello? It's not on. It's not on. It's not on. Oh okay. Oh. I think the mic actually is broke. Casper <laughs> Casper, you're only allowed to blow in the night <laughs>
Only I can blow on the mic, Casper. Try again. Hello? You're going to have to put in some work. You're going to hold it, all right? All right. Sure. <laughs> wow. All right. So mainly uh, me breaking the ice always was a way to, you know, try to fit in. I guess it worked. <laughs> but did it really get my attention span up or my grades up or really uh, help me, uh, you know, collaborate more? That's arguable. Uh, it took, uh, but uh, you know, yeah, the, the main point of A school was uh, really uh, to provide a comfortable environment uh, to grow and change together. And it took the time to really uh, get to know what was going on between uh, teacher and student. Like every day, uh, I know it's tiring, literally. They, they always want to know how you're doing personally. Like. Like Pam would come, like, uh, hello, uh, Lucas, uh, can we talk? Can we talk? I, I need to talk to you. And Corey would come from the left side and be like, hi, Corey, uh, Lucas, uh, can we talk? I'd love to talk. And then I'm like, yeah, talking's great. <sighs> I beat your I beat your blow, Casper. And then COVID-19 hit, and I didn't get to really talk uh, and really communicate with uh, Pam and Corey as I wanted to. And uh, I guess now I realized, you know, every time people say A school's there for you to really uh, teach you to really talk about, you know, and question a lot of the things you learn. Um, but now I realized, I think as a student, now going into the real world, it was now my turn to really say, can I talk to you, Pam? Can I talk to you, Corey? Because in life, you're supposed to, you know, really talk yourself, not have teachers chase you around and being like, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I didn't get your graduation speech yet. Uh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, all the times where they had uh, kept having those uh, tiring uh, speeches where it's like, throw your phones away. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Thank you. But no matter what place I was in, I always had a place to grow. And I knew when I came back in 2020, I knew it was my time to go to Corey and ask for the help I wanted and really talk about what I was having trouble with. And in real life, that's how you that's how you make connections with new jobs you get, you know, being like Hey, could I have a job? Yeah, I'm talking to you. But yeah, uh, everything starts with a discussion. And that's what A school really provides is they really, really allow uh, freedom of speech. It's not, it's not like, you know, when uh, you talk to a teacher, like the teacher's like, are you talking back to me? And it's like, it's how a conversation works. And my gosh, uh, sorry if uh, this may be taken over by comedy, but really, the point is, you could always grow with just that one leap forward to just start a conversation. And maybe too late for that, since I may have missed many of those chances, but I'm trying. And... Uh, Thank you to the seniors and juniors for really uh, helping me, uh, you know, uh, giving me the courage to really reach out, really ask for help. <clears throat> Ricky, 
Um, and thank you to the writers of the Growth Mindset book uh, you guys gave me because that way I wouldn't have been able to reach out and be like, this is this is a moment of growth, not a moment of, oh my god, I'm horrible at English. But yeah, you gotta give props to Pam and Corey. I mean, gosh, how, how did they have the energy to keep chasing you and really telling you, I want to work on this with you. And now... I want to work on many things with you, and I will come back. So Pam and Corey, I love you. Come on up, Pam and Corey! Give them a hand. So that's voluntary. You guys should know that they all opted to speak, and it's hard to get up here. So, really, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. So, we have a few gifts that we traditionally give to the graduates, and one of them happens to be a diploma. Uh, get, we're going to call everybody up to get them. And just to clarify, one of the in biggest inspirations for sorry, our program is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. So there is a quote on the diploma, and it says they, they would leave our school with a difference. They would no longer be grade-motivated people. They would be knowledge-motivated people. They would need no external pushing to learn. Their push would come from the inside. They would be enough by Robert Percy. So we are going to call each one of you up. And one of the best uh, parts of my job every year is that I get to think of a book that each of the seniors would really enjoy. And I work on it all year. And I think about it based on comments they make in class or to me on the side. So they're very personalized. So I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you read them. Um, so we're going to call you up. Okay. So I'm going to hand them. And you're gonna, okay. So Pam's going to read the names. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. I think I'm pretty loud. So first up, Sam. Come on up, Sam. So I have to use my phone. Daisy, when breath becomes air. Charlotte, white oleander. Kayla, dark places. Alexa, Paper Towns. Kirk, Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Fernando, Station Eleven. Sure. 
Gordon, Tuesdays with Maury. Aaliyah, little fires everywhere. Dexter, dead man walking. <laughs> Lucas, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> a lot. Congratulations, seniors. You made it. Thank you to the juniors for helping us celebrate you, and thank you for all helping support your families and students. Everyone has been impacted in some way by the pandemic, and for all of us, life has changed. For some of us, there has been little change. And for some of us, it has been dramatic. There have been times of hope and sadness, times to reflect on what we have learned over the past year. It is now time to continue to move forward. We should take these experiences, learn from them, and build on them. I am proud of each and every one of you for keeping the spirit alive and looking forward and being flexible to work with this crazy year. I applaud your resilience and continued efforts to make the best of the situation. I hope you take one, just one thing that one Corey or I said to heart and use it as you move forward. We both loved what you all said and you have taught us as much as we have taught you. Thank you all for coming today. For the seniors, you wanna forget, for the seniors, there are boxes in the back and there is a book that has all your writings in it, correct? Yes. So thank you everyone for coming today, much appreciated. Have a great day. Please take the box. It has a beautiful cupcake inside. Corey. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 